Jennifer, could you walk us through some of the most common causes of burnout? You know, what are the major things we need to, to look out for in ourselves, those we work with, those we manage? Yeah, so it, it was really important in, in, you know, in 2019, where the World Health Organization actually identified burnout as institutional stress. It's occupational stress left unmanaged. And for those that are leaders in HR, um, leaders who are looking to create policy around it, it gave some guidelines because before, you know, burnout was kind of considered nebulous. It wasn't anything that we were treating seriously. And that was a big problem, except in Sweden. Sweden was treating it seriously there. And there was pharmacological and therapeutics related to this issue. But when the World Health Organization um, identified it as, um, as this occupational stress, and it's uh, included in their international classification of diseases, what they found is, is again, not a medical condition, but a syndrome of stress that shows up in these three major signs. And you'll see this in levels of depletion. So we're exhausted at the end of the day. We're having a really hard time getting motivated in the morning. A lot of people talked about that feeling of um, just like almost feet in cement. They couldn't get to the shower. Actually, interesting data showers are down in 2021 by 30%, which is an interesting data point. I think we're, we've lost sort of hygiene and routine. And, <laughs> and a lot of that is because we're burned out, we're chronically stressed. And then too, we see this in like, you know, drinking more coffee or having to relax the, in the evening, we see alcohol sales, you know, go up dramatically. All of this is again, signs of burnout. And then we see this too, in this um, emotional distance from our job. So we used to feel really good at what we do. And now we're so overworked. We feel this lack of efficacy, you know, like we're not valued. Uh, we don't have purpose. We're not inspired. We saw that a lot in healthcare teaching, you know, tech companies are all of a sudden this remote work and they're working three hours more per day. Cause they're always on all of this makes us feel less effective. And then the third way that it shows up is cynicism. So this high level of negativism towards our job and using fixed mindset language, like always and never, it's always going to be like this. It's never going to change a lot of, I, you know, it's, it's very myopic. It's my problem. Um, and I can't do anything about it. So a sense of hopelessness. So these three signs are really something that we need to, I see in ourselves, if we're thinking that we may be burning out, but also we tend to misdiagnose our coworkers or, you know, colleagues, or even our subordinates as being underperforming when they are likely chronically stress because it shows up in presenteeism and absenteeism, um, more sick days, more mistakes, irritability, you know, just not a great coworker, you know, they're not as friendly. Yeah. All of these things we think, oh, you're just, you're underperforming. We should put you on an exit strategy. And more than likely, um, in most cases, that person is actually experiencing symptoms of burnout and that's what's contributing to their, you know, issues in their performance at work. I mean, so if, if you've got a, what was previously a high performer who's not performing so well, then, you know, check for burnout. Check for burnout because, you know, you had this passionate person that was really great. They were friendly and excited and passionate and, and driven and performing really well. All of their sales goals were being met or exceeded, you know, and then all of a sudden they're just, they just hate their job and, you know, they're acting out. It, if that's probably not the case, we have to look at all the underlying reasons why someone could get to that point. And, and when you're exhausted and you're overworked and you're feeling a lack of agency, all of a sudden you're being asked to answer emails at 11 o'clock at night and solve problems the next morning by eight. I mean, you're going to feel uh, a little disillusioned with your job and you, maybe you're not going to perform at that same level. So those are the kind of things that we need to start taking a moment in, in HR and in leadership and, and taking a pause and then asking, how did this person get to this point? In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe by your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.